All right, let's talk about electrical current. Electrical current is defined as the flow of charged particles. Typically, we talk about the flow of positively charged particles. This is called conventional current. Thinking about the structure of an atom, positive particles are in the nucleus of the atom. They're the protons that are tucked real tight inside that nucleus. Electrons are actually the charges that flow. Um, they are negatively charged. It's not going to affect um, how anything works. It's just, make note, electrons actually flow opposite the conventional current. Electricity can sometimes be tough to analyze because you don't really have a good mental picture on it. So I've got a couple of different analogies uh, that we can talk through in regards to electrical current. Uh, the most popular one is comparing electrical current to water flow. Okay. Um, you could think of it, a river might branch into several different tributaries. Uh, if you want to think of it more in a big city kind of way, your water main the uh, plumbing system there will div divide and deliver to individual houses. Um, one of my personal favorites moving from a small city into DFW is thinking about traffic flow. So instead of charges moving from point A to point B or water flowing from point A to point B, you can also think about cars traveling from point A to point B. Um, they will travel down different roads. There could be detours. Most things in circuits have um, an analogous traffic uh, counterpart. So conventional, flow, uh, conventional current flows from high voltage to low voltage. Uh, this has to do with your battery. Um, there's a positive side of the battery and a negative side of the battery. Current will flow out of the positive side and into the negative side. Uh, when your battery is drained, it's no longer providing that potential difference. Um, so the current is just, it's kind of stagnant. It just sits there. Other different sources of uh, electrical potential difference. The battery is obviously the most common. It's a big reservoir of chemical potential energy that gets converted into electrical energy. Um, you have your PV cells, your solar panels uh, that convert light into electricity. A generator um, is like a hamster wheel or one of those stationary bikes that you paddle and the little light turns on. That converts kinetic energy into electrical energy um, like that. There are two types of current. In physics one, we focus primarily on direct current. Um, your house is wired so that there's an alternating current. So like a battery, for example, one side's positive, one side is negative. Um, what comes out of your outlet, it just flips back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so there's reasons for that. It's a little more uh, efficient in terms of like energy loss, but the, uh, the analysis for that is definitely not a physics one topic. The primary rule that we deal with when we are looking at currents is Kirchhoff's junction rule, and I definitely misspelled this. It's weird, there's two H's, my bad. Um, Kirchhoff's junction rule essentially says what goes in must come out. It 
is an expression of conservation of charge. Which you should be familiar with if you are in chemistry. Right? Mass should be conserved, charge should be conserved, um, it cannot be created or destroyed, it's an intrinsic property of a particle. So if you have a circuit that's wired up and, and you come to like the crossroads, then what goes into the crossroads must come out. Okay, so in this sample problem, we have three plus four amps going in to this junction. And then we have 1.5 plus this current number four, okay, flowing out. So three plus four is seven, seven minus 1.5. is 5.5 amps flowing this way, like so. The units for current is the amp. It's a capital letter A. The symbol for current, it's kind of weird. It's the capital letter I. Um, but one amp is defined as one coulomb of charge per second in time. The tool that we use to measure current is called an ammeter. Um, you have to put it into the current. If you imagine, you know, this is like a little river that is flowing around. You actually have to dip your ammeter into the current in order to measure it. To measure it. Uh, the ammeter needs to have a very, very small, effectively zero resistance. Otherwise, the current is going to be affected by that. So essentially, you, you want to measure it without affecting the circuit itself. So the formula for current, um, as we said, it's equal to the number of coulombs that pass by a certain point each second. Um, more practically, we also look at current in terms of Ohm's law, which we mentioned in our resistance and resistivity notes. So Ohm's law says that, yes, V is equal to I times R, or rather that current is equal to the ratio of voltage over resistance, like so. Um, so kind of thinking about what you know about resistors already, right? A resistor it kind of impedes the flow of charges. Um, you can think, well, current flows better with a smaller resistance. they are inversely related. Okay. So the bigger the resistance is, the smaller the current will be. If we make the resistance really, really, really small, then the current can be really, really big. So we have one simple sample problem. Uh, that makes use of this relationship right over here. There's a current from a battery measured as 0.17 milliamps. How much charge flows through the circuit after three seconds? So we are looking for how much charge. Okay. Um, we actually don't need the voltage here. Uh, this is the only relevant information. So our current is equal to 0.17 times 10 to the negative 3 because we are in milliamps, okay? Uh, and the time that we allow the circuit to run is 3 seconds, okay? So if i is equal to q over t, we want to rearrange and solve for q. So q is equal to i times t. Multiplying that current by the time. We get 5.1 times 10 to the negative fourth coulombs. Okay. And that's it.